So now we're ready to talk about the so-called binomial theorem. The binomial theorem gets its name because we want to talk about how do you multiply out the expression x plus a to the nth power. x plus a is a binomial. If you want to take the power of a typical binomial, what happens? Well, it might seem weird to start here, but I'm going to start with the zeroth power. If you raise something to the zeroth power, you should get 1. So x plus a to the zeroth power is going to be a 1. Great. Um, then you look at the next one, x plus a to the first. Okay, well, if you take something to the first power, there's really nothing to expand. You're just going to get x plus a right here. Things get a little bit more interesting. We get x plus a squared. x plus a squared, what does that mean here? Of course, that means you're going to take x plus a times x plus a, and you have to foil that thing out. You're going to get an x times x, which is an x squared. x times a, and then an a times x, and then an a squared. When you combine like terms, you're going to get x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. All right? x plus a cubed, how does one do that? Well, x plus a cubed would mean x plus a times x plus a times x plus a. Now, the first one, x plus a squared, we already did that one. That's above. Uh, so we get x plus 2ax plus a squared. If you multiply those things out, you're going to get distribute the x squared. You're going to get x cubed. Distribute the x squared onto the a. Uh, you get, uh, I'm combining some like terms right here. Oh, I, I went the other way around. Sorry. We're going to distribute the x first. So x squared times x is x cubed. X times 2ax is a 2ax, 2ax squared. X times a squared is going to be an a squared x. Then distribute the a. You're going to get an ax squared. Distribute the a on the 2. You get a 2a squared x. And then lastly, you get an a cubed, like so. If we combine like terms, there's x squareds that can combine. There's x's that can combine. You're going to get an x squared plus 3ax plus 3ax squared plus a cubed. Um, to do the next one, it's a little bit more complicated. What you would do is you would take x plus a cubed times x plus a. We would multiply this thing out. We're going to take the coefficients from this guy right here, combine like terms, and you're going to end up with just the, I'm just going to list the final product. You're going to end up with x to the fourth, 4ax cubed plus 6a squared x squared, 4a cubed x, and a to the fourth. I kind of hit up the magic there, but I want to show you something that's going to be pretty neat. Uh, so if you look at the coefficients in the sequence, the first one was a 1 when you take the 0th power. When you take the first power, you get 1 and 1. When you take the second power, you get 1, 2, and 1. When you take the third power, you get 1, 3, 3, and 1. And although I didn't do the details for all these, if you do the fourth power, you can confirm it yourself. You're going to get 4, 6, 6, 4, and 1, which these numbers look very familiar. Aha! This is none other than just Pascal's triangle, right? 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. When you start multiplying out these polynomial expressions, these binomial powers, the coefficients you get are just going to be the numbers in Pascal's triangles, which those numbers are called the binomial coefficients. They're called the binomial coefficients because of the binomial theorem. So when one multiplies out something like x plus a to the nth power, what are we expecting? Well, we're going to get a bunch of products that look like the following. a to the j times x to the k with the property that j plus k equals n. So we look at all the possible combinations. So like, look here. We have x to the fourth. We have 1a, 3x's. 2a's, 2x's. 3a's, 1x. 0x's, 4a's. So we look at all the possible ways of combining uh, two, two numbers, two natural numbers to make four. And you see there's five possibilities. Zero... Uh, 0 plus 4, 1 plus 3, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 1, and 4 plus 0. Those are the two possible ways. So that's what these that's what these monomials are going to look like in this expansion. Then the coefficients are just the nth row of Pascal's triangle using the binomial coefficients. So this is then the binomial theorem. x plus a to the nth power. It'll look like this polynomial where the powers of x's are getting smaller. The powers of a are getting bigger. Until eventually we end up with, why is that an a? That should be a 2, a squared. And so in the end, you go from a to the 0 up to a to the n. And then the coefficients are just the binomial coefficients from Pascal's triangle. It's a beautiful little theorem. Let me put it into practice right here. Uh, we're going to use, oh boy, typos galore here. We're going to use the binomial theorem to expand x plus 2 to the fifth power. So thinking of Pascal's triangle, I'm going to need that. So we get 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And then the fifth row is going to look like 1, or 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Of course, if you have Pascal's triangle written in front of you, you don't have to go through these calculations over and over again. 
So by Pascal's, uh, by the binomial theorem, what we get is the following. X plus two to the fifth is gonna look like five choose zero times two to the zero X to the fifth. Then we're gonna get five choose one times two to the first X to the fourth plus five choose two X are two squared X cubed. Then we're gonna get five choose three times two cubed X squared. The next we're gonna get five choose four, two to the fourth X. And then finally we get five choose five, which is gonna be two to the fifth X to the zero. So simplify these things. Five choose zero from Pascal's triangles of one, two to the zero is one, then we get X to the fifth. The next one, five choose one is a five, two to the first is two, and we get X to the fourth. Next one, five choose two is 10 times two to the fourth, which is four times X cubed. And the next one, five choose three is also 10. Then we get two times, two cubed which is eight times X to the squared there. Then we're gonna five choose four, which is five times two to the fourth, which is 16 uh, times X. And then finally we get five choose five, which is one times two to the fifth, which is 32 times X to the zero. So you don't see any X's there. And then simplifying the coefficients, we're going to get X to the fifth, five times two is 10, 10 X to the fourth. Uh, we get 10 times four, which is 40 X cubed. Uh, next, we're gonna get uh, 10 times eight, which is 80 X squared. Uh, the next one, five times 16. Notice if you borrow one of the 16s, two, you get two times five, which is 10. So you get eight times 10, which is 80, 80 X. And then lastly, you're gonna get 32. So when you compare that to the alternative, that was a whole lot easier to multiply that, that binomial expression, X plus two to the fifth. It was super simple. We didn't have to FOIL anything at all because we saw this pattern here. Let's do one more example. Um, I have it hidden down here. Uh, so let's expand 2Y minus three to the fourth right here. And so the expansion is gonna look something like the following. We're gonna get four choose zero times uh, two times Y to the fourth power times negative three to the zero power. Don't forget the negative sign. Then the next we're gonna get four choose one times two Y to the third times negative three to the first. Then we get four choose two times two Y squared, negative three squared. Next, we're gonna get four choose one, uh, excuse me, four choose three, which admittedly is the same number, but I, let's go in the right order here. You're gonna get two Y to the first, and then you're gonna get negative three cubed. And then lastly, you're gonna get four choose four, which is gonna look like two Y to the zero, the negative three to the fourth, like so. So for the binomial coefficients, we can compute them using factorials or we can use, use Pascal's triangle that's right here. The fourth row looks like one, four, six, six, one. So we'll just remember those numbers. And so we end up with one times two to the fourth is 16, 16th y to the fourth. And then we times that by negative three to the zero, that's a one. Then the next one, we're gonna, binomial coefficient was a four. We're gonna get two cubed, which is eight y cubed times negative three to the first, which is negative three. Then the next one we're gonna get is four choose six or four choose two, which is six. Uh, two y squared will give us a four y squared like that. And then you get negative three squared, which gives a positive nine, pay attention to the sign there. Uh, the next one, four choose three, which is also four. Then we're gonna get a two y and we're gonna get negative three to cubed. So that's negative 27. And then lastly, four choose four is one. Uh, two Y to the zero is also one. And we get negative three to the fourth, which is a positive 81. And so multiplying in, there's no like terms to combine here. That's already been happening. So multiplying, we're gonna get 16 Y to the fourth. Next, we're gonna get minus. Let's see what we have here. We're gonna have uh, eight times three, which is 24. If we times that by four, that's just doubling it twice. Uh, so you're going to get 48 and then 96, so 96 Y cubed. The next one, we're gonna get positive four times six times nine Y squared. And so we get four times, uh, excuse me, four times nine, uh, that's gonna be 36. Times that by six, you're gonna get six cubed, which is 216 uh, Y squared. Uh, the next one's gonna be negative. You have four times two times negative 27 Y there. If you double 27, you get 54. Uh, then to times it by four, we have to double it again, right? So that's gonna be 108 and then 216. So we get another 216, negative 216 Y. And then lastly, one times one times 81, that's an 81. 
So a little bit of arithmetic that has to be done, but for the most part, this is fairly painless compared to what we'd have to do alternatively. Uh, alternatively there. The binomial theorem is a super useful tool to simplify multiplication of binomials raised to various powers.